right here. Uh, good. My name is Irene. And uh, several uh, accessible sharing with you work we've done in the last one year. I want to start by acknowledging German um, Development Corporation support but, uh, because if it were not for them, we would. Um, so I will start by seeing my colleagues, but I can begin the conversation. I'll start to my right. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Good morning. I'm happy to be here. Good morning. Hey, Swapula. I see you of ICT in Kenya, in charge of city initiative management. I'm the head of I standards specific to the that I'm going to cover. Okay, thank you. First off, um, I'll start by saying some of us working in the along so today at the in governance and sharing about as you all imagine, part of the other space. But now we are working towards a more Africa. Very happy to be here today. Uh, some of the experience. So let me start by saying that um, the whole journey done with with young children are blind without digital skill so graduate real skill that they just hire them so in higher education struggle but if they have the right digital laptop just so with the process Realize that even have the digital access. What does access mean? Access access are focused at the same that it's products and services. So I'm using a money mobile application to use like some of and because we work with of life has been it has been a huge challenge. And as you can see, um actually the whole arena Africa, the whole all the solutions we are coming up with are on technology. But technology has proved total divide. That's why we are here to discuss an elite environment. I will hand over to James. He'll um, share with us. That's the problem. But I want uh, James to ask so what, what legal. Irene, and uh, thank you to the IGF for uh, this platform. 
the inclusivity with relation to the standard. Uh, in Kenya, we started the journey of uh, inclusivity in 2003 uh, with the establishment of the National Council for Bathability. That is that was an act of parliament uh, which uh, subsequently established the council. And then subsequently, we signed up to uh, the, to the UN uh, Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability that essentially uh, necessitates us to focus on issues of mobility, access to justice, environment, and uh, most importantly, education technology. So it basically emphasizes a human rights approach to activity. That permeated into our constitution of 2010, 2010 because we actually undertook a, a review of our constitution, which uh, had initially been independent. And so the cognizance was on human rights perspectives to to the person with disability. So the chapter, there's a whole chapter in the Kenya Constitution that focuses on rights, specifically Article 54, that specifically focuses on the rights of persons with disabilities, including the rights to be treated with dignity and respect. So as the ministry in charge of ICT, we took that up. Uh, we developed the national ICT policy of 2019. Uh, this, again, was the second policy. The initial one had been in uh, 2006. So in response to the demands of the new constitution in respect to human rights, we therefore had a whole section on accessibility, uh, which uh, then uh, speaks to commitments of the government in regards to uh, availing ICT information services to the public uh, in alternative accessible format, persons with, uh, with the disabilities. So we also committed to promote the design, the distribution of accessible ICTs at an early stage. So basically speaking to embedding ability in education system, in digital uh, literacy. And we committed to ensure that websites of government, departments, and agencies comply with the international uh, web accessibility standards and are accessible to persons with disabilities. So basically we are supposed to <coughs> revamp all our government's uh, websites. Uh, these are the avenues through which our public uh, citizens access the services uh, offered by the government, so they need to be accessible. We also committed to provide incentives. Okay, so let me just finish up. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'll come back to you. I know we've pretty quick. I think what's critical um, that our conference SDGs are very clear about not. ICT chapter so an enable for and for us as in and what we are hearing what is accessible and from that perspective we that to be able to a solid Standard. Uh, and also make it uh, remember the digital right, then that's when we are there. We want to end. Let me, uh, before I get standard, I want how are persons with Africa. ICT access. Why this particular tell me assure and she can share how technology is to thank you so much. Uh, uh, first of all If you look at uh, stability poverty, they are married. Talk about uh, technology. As I said before, poverty major, major cause when it comes to this. Now, when a uh, person has a lot of opportunity, for example, like now, as we speak, uh, recently, we COVID, by the COVID pandemic, it really changed 
perspective but the way we do work so if we have uh, improved technology in that then we will have a wide opportunity for persons with ability to contribute and also to uh, the focus uh, without uh, we cannot achieve our goal without inclusivity to sectors persons with Uh, the major challenge we have, like uh, for example, we are in a meeting, we have a uh, hard of hearing. You can imagine if we have hard of hearing in this meeting, uh, we don't have captions, so we leave uh, from this information. Information is a powerful way that can improve or, or make a person contribute to the development of. For a deaf person, uh, for example, I'll give an example where I'm sleeping at the hotel. There are phones. If I have any challenge or I am sick or I have any emergency, how do I call the reception? How do I contact the reception? There's fire. How am I notified? So it means we are left behind. Uh, for our brothers and sisters who are blind, Accessing to uh, mobile money sometimes become difficult because they have to use a third party to without uh, as we talk of technology, we need to consider uh, we need to consider our brothers and sisters who are able. You can imagine the ATM machines for short stature and a person on some of the machines are too high for them. So they also need a third party to make them access. And uh, sometimes we have this product are uh, very expensive, so we really need to regulate on the prices. For example, if you have a laptop for a blind person, it's um, more costly than the normal, uh, the normal laptop. So we aren't being fair. So we really need to community. There's a lot that we need uh, to. I'm so happy that we're here. And uh, we are on the way to success. So, for example, how can a blind person water? When we talk about, just don't talk about uh, phones, accessing phones and apps on the phone. We have so many challenges that many things. Um, Shura, thank you. Have like captions. Any actually, and and part I think I Um, and
Zeit größer. Actually, back then. Thank you so much. So, um, actually, I And uh, the lesson and develop. Now, um, guys, with the with the expertise, I think we learned a lot. So we do appreciate that. Maybe one more question for you. How did you um, the different groups? Very complicated. And what is the importance of? Uh, Therefore, for us, uh, standards development is a stakeholder. Therefore, without involvement of no buy in, no? that we want to involve the stakeholders where to go. But once the stakeholders Having said that, uh, 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 when we, we formulated the uh, technical group of stakeholders, then we found that uh, not balanced. We have a head all to it, what stakeholders do it. Most important, this was a unique process that uh, required even reach out to the specific identified system so that we have 
build castles, we can use this and we have really involved the national council of disability category. Uh, involve them in the capture the requirement because it is difficult for a certain and the people the developing persons with those persons are not involved. We have to bring board so that capture their requirements, whether they are needs, whether they are challenges, so that from the white guards, even we develop this, their requirements are captured. And moving forward, we had to bring them in the agency so that they understand the as well what they are in the so that when we move to the next step, then it's easier for the government. That is really, really a critical point because um, uh, bottom line, if you're going to succeed in standards development, there has to be very deep stakeholder engagement. And I think that's one thing we worked together and we did very well. I think for me, from my experience, what was really interesting is the debates we were having between different stakeholders because how Kenya standards looks at the development process versus how someone with a disability who's blind or someone who's deaf was looking at it are totally different. But bottom line is when you have experts and you have stakeholders, then you're able to come up with a more comprehensive um, standard that really addresses the needs uh, that you want to address. So that was a very, very um, intense process. And it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. So, so we really do appreciate the guidance and your expertise in the process. So I want to move forward to our implementers. As Lucorito said, implementers also had to get involved in standards development so that you're not just handing over a document to them and they have no clue what's going on. Their feedback was very critical to the whole process. So I'll move on to Derek. Uh, Derek, welcome. And the first question I have for you, is: what is the role and commitment of authority in So much I've been uh, uh, the division of uh, the ICT. James introduced the ICT policing as what it has process on accessibility or and our motto in authority is opening your eyes. So it became apparent that we were responsible for something. But in terms of opening the world, we discovered that our skills and competence to open the world for persons living with disabilities really compromised. So when Enable came about and they told us they have the expertise addressing matters of city to people with disabilities embraced it, got the invite to participate in the team and Kenya Bureau of Standards. So as I said, CA Education Authority is the ICT thing. Our job is therefore to set rules, the players in the ICT sector, and also to monitor their compliance. Once you issue a license, it comes with conditions and mm -hmm. the uh, people who have been licensed are required to ensure they comply with every clause. And these licenses, that matter now, had to adopt a clause on accessibility. So we've developed this standard as an agency. We were very keen to see what is coming up so that when we go to our licensed entities so in the private sector who offer communication services, know what it is and we will use it. So that's our commitment and that's what we are. Monitoring adoption and activation of the standard. Fantastic. Um, and can you share with us who are your customers or consumers or target standard? Yeah, the regulatory bodies normally uh, provide an opportunity for investors, the communication sector, to come in. Uh, when an investor looks at their competence, they look at their resources. They make a business case of what they think they can do. They come to us to get a license. And once they get that license, we expect them to go out to the public, serve them in very specific terms and applications. So our main consumers are vendors of it, people who bring in mobile phones, computers, and all that. 
they are licensed. So develop and apply this standard. These vendors must comply. Products they bring in Kenya must be accessible. So those are some of the people that we work with. The others are contractors or installers. Those people who are going to do cabling, who are going to install machines, are they installing in a manner that will enable people with disabilities access them or not? Those are also licensed and we make them our stakeholders or our customers. The others are internet service providers who provide the content that uh, puts people online. These ones we want to ensure that they also adhere to the requirements of the standard. So all ISPs are our candidates. The other companies are infrastructure and data center operators. These people who install large facilities want to ensure that in their development of this work, as they do their installations, as they lay their infrastructure, as they operate their data centers, they must comply with the standard on accessibility. Then finally, we have these mobile networks, people who are running all forms of applications on the mobile platform, mobile broadband, voice, and other SMS services. Are they accessible to people with disabilities or not? So these are the entities that we look at. These are the focus point. Fantastic. Maybe one last question. Um, I like the way um, the type of consumers you have a large scale, so that they have a large impact on, uh, in the country, in Kenya. And um, we are bound to make a difference because accessibility starts with leadership. It starts with, with the big companies, then everyone else is able to follow. What are the next steps in terms of implementation of this standard when it comes to communication? Yeah, after the launch of the standard, uh, uh, Communications Authority was one of the entities that was handed a hard copy, not just a soft copy, given a hard copy to go implement. So for that matter, we got the responsibility to adopt and apply the standard in-house within the Communication Authority processes and procedures and even the way of thinking. So what we have done is that we have uh, presented this to our management. They have accepted it and all departments have uh, received the standard and have been required to comply by ensuring that we adjust our website, our forms, our customer care portions, and every department within the communication authority to align with the provisions of the standard. As uh, Sakaria has uh, reported, that standard comes with requirements and it also comes with conformance. So you look at the requirement and conform. So that we have practiced it on our own. It's an ongoing process and we have formed a committee for this. Then we also go out to the stakeholders or the licensees that I've mentioned. The first job we have done is to inform them that this standard is up, they need to familiarize with it and adopt it. Now we've planned a series of workshops and regulatory notices that are coming up, sure that our stakeholders are on board. Thank you so much for that. I think, um... Uh, we'll try on to James again. And um, uh, the critical, one of, maybe one, one thing I can share is that we work a lot with other disabilities, including, including those who are blind. But one experience that touches on, on the blind and the importance of this standard is that you find in Kenya, um, the citizens are required to file their taxes online on the Kenyan government website every year, and there's a deadline. But what happens if you're blind, you can't do it by yourself. Every other Kenyan can do it. Why? Because the website is not accessible. It was not developed with people with disabilities in mind. So it doesn't cater to them. And what happens when you speak to blind people, they complain, they say, hey, and when I don't file my taxes on time, I'm penalized, not filing. But it's not my fault. So what we are trying to address, just to bring this home, are those specific services that we provide, whether it's private sector, whether it's in healthcare, whether it's in education, whether it's in employment, to make sure that all the applications you're using, the devices you're using are inclusive. And this means that if I'm using assistive technology, assistive technology can be a screen reader. Blind people use screen readers to be able to read content on a website. That my screen reader can read that content without any problem. But that also depends on the development of that website, the development of that application. So to take this home, because I want to learn more from, um, from, from James. Um, James, can you please tell us uh, who are your consumers at the ICT Authority of Kenya? Because ICT Authority of Kenya is under the Ministry of ICT. Correct. So who are your consumers? 
you thank you Irene for that question uh, the ICT authority plays a twofold role uh, one regulatory and uh, the other one is implementation uh, the implementation uh, aspects we basically provide uh, common shared uh, platforms for government agencies that includes uh, data center platforms for them to host their applications we provide internet connectivity to the government agencies that is ministries uh, departments agencies and counties governments and uh, we also uh, host for them uh, websites as you've said Irene so that is uh, basically the implementation aspect of it on the regulatory aspect of it we work with the uh, the, the the ICT managers ICT professionals within uh, the government agencies that is the ministries counties departments and agencies to ensure that they comply with the standards that therefore ensure that the government is moving towards a common goal in terms of uh, digitization so in this aspect we therefore need uh, them to comply with the standards in regards to software development uh, we require them to uh, adhere to standards in terms of uh, websites development hardware acquisition so in this regard we're talking about uh, having uh, devices that are accessible to persons with disabilities uh, we require them to ensure that uh, they have uh, programs in place to build capacity internally to ensure that uh, they are conforming to the to the standards so those are the two uh, the uh, dimensions of our of our, of our responsibility as uh, the ICT authority, we we uh, as well uh, deal with the ICT firms, ICT businesses that are doing uh, business with the government. We basically have a framework for accreditation of the same. So therefore, we also require them to meet certain requirements whenever they are engaging with government agencies to comply with the therefore the standards that we set. Uh, to ensure that we are having an ICT investment that responds to the needs and uh, requirements of the government. Thank you, Eri. Thank you. Um, for that. And as we know, um, government services are very hard to reach for disabilities. So can you maybe tell us what is your commitment as ICT authority? It seems like you've got a lot of government agencies. So what's your commitment to ensuring that the standard is actually implemented? Thank you for that question. We uh, as well participated uh, quite well in the development of the standard. Uh, we were well represented. We understand the requirements of the same. And we have already hit the ground running in respect to the implementation of the standard. First is capacity building, because uh, that is quite a big gap in, the, in terms of uh, in the public sector, in terms of the so our software developers and our designers. So we have uh, made the training uh, in terms of uh, basically enhancing the platforms we already have to ensure that they are accessible to persons with disability on a pilot phase. Uh, secondly, we have embarked on uh, basically the, the aspect of, uh, of, of, of capacity building uh, for, 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 for our MDAs uh, up to the county level to ensure that they meet uh, the requirements for accessibility. So those two aspects are, first of all, uh, initial steps. But nonetheless, we tend to walk through the whole cycle of uh, implementation of the standards. Uh, first of all, by ensuring that we conduct regular audits in the MDAs to ensure that uh, there's uh, compliance and ultimately the issue of monitoring and evaluation at each uh, end of the financial years to ensure that uh, uh, MCDAs or ministries, counties, departments and agencies are complying to the standard. Thank you, Irene. Uh, thank you so much, James. I think you raised a very important point and you uh, about capacity build. Uh, digital accessibility is a very new concept, especially in the African continent. In the West, most uh, people have been engaging in the accessibility discussions for over 25 years. So they are pretty advanced. But when it comes to Africa, we are still at the foundational stage. So we do believe capacity build, training, all that is very, very critical to make sure that we understand what is digital accessibility. And when it comes to the technical aspect of this, how do we implement this standard in a way that we actually succeed, where we provide uh, very inclusive digital products and services? So that's an area that we investments in long term um, um, as we continue to evolve and invest in digital products and services. So maybe I'll come next to Derek, you're right next to me. Um, my last question for you, are there any tools that uh, can support standard uh, 
this. Uh, we change the new mechanism. Yeah, there are the plans and turn for it. Assist stakeholders to work with to ensure that they keep us updated to the progress on the project. And the plans are written at its own annual basis, putting a chapter about availability of their services and products by people. That's the first one. Next one that we have done is that we have also uh, put it into our regulations that everyone of our licensed entities, as they come in, even those with the existing license, that ready submit a commitment that you to develop and include persons with disability in your applications and campaigns. And as you import products, you need to include a submission on compliance at the type approval level. You want to introduce maybe a new Samsung device to sell in the Kenyan market. We want you to confirm the content about accessibility on it as part of our procedures. The next thing is that we have also developed uh, an implementation framework, it's standard KS2952. This implementation framework is an overall assessment where you do self-assessment to know whether you are complying or not. Because it is to determine yourself and say, I think I'm doing well. But this framework has clarified and put steps one by one that will help you audit yourself. And in the initial gap analysis, we tried it on our own website at Communication Authority. We thought we were very inclusive, but we found ourselves below 50%. Assessment was done. So we've put this as the initial step have to go through a self-assessment, look at the implementation framework, identify the gaps, and share with us a plan how you are going to narrow the gap until this standard is met. That's why we are doing a continuous compliance monitoring. And at some point in time, after the basics have been done, we expect to run workshops to train people, but we will now go into enforcement. As I told you earlier, we are a regulatory agency. Therefore, we apply all rules up to the end, including enforcement. So we will list anybody to comply, and perhaps they will not make this. Um, thank you so much, uh, Derek. Um, I think the one important uh, point to note from Derek's conversation is that the standards development and implementation process is an ongoing process. As much as we developed the standard, it did not end there. And it's a very long-term project. So a good example, I know the operator and the enable team have been working heavily in the background. And part of it is to make changes to some of, um, after the standards development, what issues came up? What did we have to handle? So maybe the operator, you can briefly tell us what is the cost of the new standard? Um, what was it or what is it? And um, and what has Kenya done to make it available to the general public? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you rightly mentioned that basically it situation, that part of the and part in the sense of Then having said that, when we start taking file and file, those standards are sold globally, version of the standards code that we have to cover some. That's one of the things really to at all this and these are global. Having said that, when we thought this standards are cost back in number of pages, what that has gone. Therefore, when that thought of economies that have gone into it, one of the standards USD, that's a part one, part two cost 60. Therefore, during that phase, uh, sale of standards, I realized that the uptake has been quite low. Some of the costs are a bit expensive. That we discussed in the as management within how 
standard to have it like that. Also affordable. One of the decisions that have been made specifically about that we are going to that has already been available on our website and like buy them for free, no cost. You can download them because the apps when they but uh, if you want to get a soft copy, it's available online. It's a unique, uh, unique uh, practice available. If you check across, there's no other standards up except for at Razor Knife. So this is the second best strategy. Available. Those people who buy it, uh, that's one of the support that actually. Um, thank you so much, Lukorito, for that. We truly, truly appreciate the support of the government of Kenya to standard your entire team in this process. And as we said, as we continue, um, continue to engage, but most importantly, you hope accessible to everyone. Because with or without a disability, whether you're a small company or a large company, can go online and download the document and understand and get to understand what are the technical requirements uh, for you to be able to develop an inclusive product. So we do appreciate that. And I'm sure I think there's something we discussed when we were having this meeting about if we need to make any changes to the standard, it's an open door. Do you want to say something? Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, standards are living documents. They can be reversed. During the implementation, if you find that some of the clauses of provisions and requirements are, in, are, are not implementable. Then we can down as a look at the document that that they are also because you can develop a requirement, but when it and that that uh, uh, a requirement was overly vicious and it could not be implemented, therefore I have to review it. Uh, we are open. We are receiving uh, comments as we implement. We incorporate and consolidate all those comments. Then all the same stakeholder. Those ones that we so that they can relook at those requirements. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I think one critical piece that you talked about is about stakeholder engagement. And there was a 60 day period for public. And I loved that uh, period because we got so much feedback globally. It was open to everyone. The document was shared globally, and we got a lot of feedback about uh, the document, and we did get together, debated a lot of the changes. Some of them passed, some of them did not. But what was also impressive that for every uh, feedback that we received, actually Kenya Bureau of Standards had to document the feedback that they got. So if we wanted to go back and see what did the public say about this document, they actually have um, more than enough feedback for that. So thank you so much, uh, Lucarito. So I'll move on to Ashera to give me give us um, from your experience. We spent quite a bit of time together debating about the standard, but most importantly, since you participated in the uh, development of this standard, um, what was your experience, and how are you going to monitor this as National Council for Persons with Disability? Uh, for Uh, thank you so much. As uh, Lucorito said, it's uh, very important to have uh, inclusion of uh, stakeholders in the process. My experience, it gave me the energy to be innovative so that we can make sure our people benefit. As a person with disability, nobody knows Nobody knows the pain we've gone through. But thanks to KEBS for that support. It involves a lot of money. And it's not about me as a surer. It's about all persons with disabilities in Africa. We have, uh, thank you for uh, our, Thank you, our partners, for actually supporting Enable to make sure that this is uh, was actualized. And remember, uh, the National Council is a government entity, and its role is to monitor the implementation for all private and public sector to make sure that uh, at least 
they comply with the standard. As a national council, we always, uh, every year, we have the MDA, which is used for assessment of performance of all the private and public sector. So I hope going forward, we'll come up with a new MDA that will actually monitor the standard uh, implementation and the service provision. We know we cannot do this alone without uh, uh, the public and uh, private sector support. We can, uh, we can better the services when we include all persons with disabilities to make sure that it's accessible to and uh, make life easy for most of us, not just in Kenya alone, but uh, also in Africa. Thank you. Fantastic. That's very, very good feedback. I think it's important we note that people with disabilities have to be at the center of design. Anything you're doing, do not make assumptions. And the fact that someone is blind does not mean they understand the needs of someone who's deaf. So you have to have everyone sitting at the table. We have about five minutes before we wrap up, and I want to see if there are any questions. We have about 10 minutes. Any questions from our audience? Uh, thank you. My name is Nkote from Kicktanet. Kenya. Uh, first, I'll say thank you. Uh, for me, I understand accessibility terms that is and stability. Stability of use and also having the skill and that's where the issue first is and the uh, irritability is the availability of the technology techniques of using say let's say of assistive devices as panels are highlighted that people with disabilities have a great challenge in accessing my my first question is that what are the questions help also importing devices for that to ensure quality all online platforms uh, another question on the authority uh, you have said you their implementation rather standards of ICT development systems and programs are okay. but I'm worried that usually the issue of income comes as an afterthought. Say that company must have an application that is in but they only include the accessibility bit when they hear that requirement. What are the regulations you have put to ensure that its accessibility and inclusion is part of the development process and so that it's inclusive and also the app or the system being developed covers all, but not as an afterthought? Um, yes, my name is Christian Jeff. I'm a professor for law, science and technology, uh, Technical University Munich. And I have to applaud you for your work. It was really interesting um, how you uh, draw this up and also implemented it. So it's uh, very interesting to hear. Uh, my question would go to the kind of knowledge governance that comes with that, because I feel that um, um, implementing these standards, many organizations will kind of answer the same questions. So I'm um, happy already experienced that or what about how to translate the knowledge um, between organizations which is sometimes a tricky issue because it's also business secrets and maybe they don't want to give away certain things but 
the other hand, they all have to find solutions for um, accessibility and make some instances it might be easier for them to all share how they kind of answered specific questions. So this was uh, was my question. Have you stumbled across this this topic of governance and sharing space? Really quick. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. No, yeah. Go ahead. You have like ten seconds. Yes, please proceed. All right, thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Judy Okite. Um, I wear many hats, but right now I will wear the Kenya ICT Action Network, uh, Kick the Net. I'm um, accessing uh, uh, projects. Um, so, Mike, uh, I appreciate the conversation that is going on here. Uh, a quick question one uh, to uh, Lucorico. Um, when you say that the standard is accessible, do you mean accessible format or accessible available? Because sometimes we change these words when we're talking about accessibility. When it comes to disability, it means um, something different. And uh, just a comment to um, the regulator and the ICT authority, uh, we would appreciate if you could share with the, with the public from time to time what is happening. Um, I'm surprised that I'm hearing from here that the ICT authority is the one implementing um, accessibility uh, matters. So thank you. Thank you, Irene. Yeah, so I'll answer one question to save time. Yes, the document is available and accessible. It's in an accessible digital format. So just to be able to save time, we have like two minutes. Luca Rita. I'll be brief on the issue of uh, making uh, the products and services uh, affordable, I think ICT ministry can address that together with the regulator on extracts on imports. But quickly mentioning about uh, the regulation, one of the regulations that mentioned about the ICT, but those is what I think is important that we put. And looking at this, uh, I was asked if addressing the various aspects. Actually, if you look at the specific, and there are functional requirements, and there are certain or usage with the vision, without vision, a limited vision. There's also perception of color, perception or no perception. And then there's also hearing or hearing. There's a vocal or no vocal at all. Those are the requirements that are in the products and the services. Just to address. Okay, uh, on my part, I will uh, want to address Nyakundi. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, indeed, the Usability and reachability is a concern for the business. And the main aim is that uh, we want to begin from where we are. There are some regrets because of what was never done earlier, but now that we know, we want to begin where we are. That's why we've developed a framework that helps us to assess ourselves, even this stakeholder to check where are they. So that now, beginning from now into the future, any new decision, any new product, you now incorporate. Uh, and reachability at that point. That's why the framework is progressing. And we want to work with stakeholders through workshops, training them, so that they can be able to start incorporating and mature to a better platform. As I said, we began maybe checking with about 50%, but we intend to take the standard to 100%, but with time. We expect to speed up this now that it's clear, this is how the standard looks like, this is how the conformance can be checked. I believe that we will get better. We have actually incorporated manufacturers in this. So before a company like Safaricom imports its products, now it will be giving this standard requirement to its manufacturers. Tell them, for you to bring me a product in Kenya, these are the requirements. That product will come when it's already accepted at design level and be reachable. Then a uh, professor from Munich University, uh, the issue of knowledge sharing, we have looked at this first. We've, uh, Try to ensure that this standard is shared among all the stakeholders and we intend to run workshops so that we also train the people and see what are the common areas and what are the experiences that can be shared. In communication authority, we have a department that 
knowledge management, knowledge sharing. So we will want to build on that capacity and take it to the next level. I'm glad I have Dr. Mugeni here who is leading that part and uh, we expect to make progress. On Judy, we will uh, try to go public. Uh, as you are aware, this study was uh, launched in May. And uh, first of all, we had to check inside and see whether we are ready. As I said, now we have formed committees. We want now to go proto. I believe that the Kenyan public will hear more about KS2952 and perhaps more of the communities, including Ethiopia, be able to listen to this. Uh, thank you so much. I know we are out of time, uh, but um, I just want to follow up on what Derek is talking about. We are where we are with the standard as a country. We start with baby steps and we keep up and we keep going. It's going to take years, not one, not two, not three. It may take, take us 10 years. But if we look at 10 years back, where are we after developing the standards? What changes have we made, whether it's in private sector, whether it's in the health sector or even in government as well? Um, so that's really important. Something else that's critical to note is that initially it starts as a very competitive um, process where this company is developing this product, this one is developing this product, it's not sharing knowledge. But what happens over time? Everyone discovers accessibility, digital accessibility is complex, very complex, but it's also a very collaborative effort. So if you share knowledge, even when you're competitors, actually, you'll actually make more progress together. The other point that's very critical is that accessibility begins with leadership. The leadership does not get the, get the buy-in of this standard to make sure it's implemented in different companies, government, then we are going to drag for a very long time. So I think the key thing is being able to make a business case so that um, uh, uh, business leaders understand that accessibility does, covers people with disability to bring them into the, pool, the markets that you want to tap into. But it also covers the needs of the elderly. Think about elderly using mobile applications all the time. Think about people in low bandwidth areas. And also think about people with low literacy levels. So it covers, and then if a product is fully accessible, everyone tends to enjoy using the product. So I want to end there, and I want to really thank the German Development Corporation for the support you've offered us for the last one year. I want to say a special thank you to Kenya Bureau of Standards for the many lessons we've learned and we continue to learn together. National Council for Persons with Disabilities for all your support. As we've said, people with disabilities have to be at the center of this conversation. Let's debate about it because their input is very valid. Uh, Communications Authority of Kenya, we are relying on you and counting on you to help make private sector, your consumers in the private sector, more inclusive. And for um, ICT Authority of Kenya, government websites accessible so that Kenyans can have access to government services. So we are here to work together. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And thank you all so much for your time and for even making an effort to come and listen to us. Thank you. <laughs>